Discoveries in technology, medicine and nutrition are emerging with accelerating speed and improving our health and quality of life. Join us in a series of conversations about exploring the new pharma and biotechnology trends. This is a view on exosomes and their potential use, brought to you by Lonza. Exosomes are nano-sized delivery vehicles generated by all cells. They are roughly between 30 and 120 nanometers large and contain a mixture of lipids, proteins, nucleic acids, and secondary metabolites packaged in a piece of cell membrane originating from cells that excrete them. Exosomes can be associated with immune responses, viral pathogenicity, pregnancy, and diseases, for instance, cardiovascular, central nervous system-related diseases, and cancer. The interest in exosomes has exploded over the last few years, and we see an increasing amount of publications and patents mentioning them. In our winter holiday special episode, we are talking with Uwe Gottschalk, the chief scientific officer of Lonza. Hi, Uwe. Thanks for coming to our podcast. You're welcome, Martina. We asked Uwe to explain the basic function of the exosomes. Exosomes are extracellular vesicles that are produced by eukaryotic cells. Their origin is in the endosomal compartment, which is why they were thought to be some sort of garbage containers uh, through which cells uh, offload digested material. But today we know that exosomes play an essential physiological role in a body-wide cell-to-cell communication. So exosomes facilitate a horizontal gene transfer between cells. And in other words, they are something like the FedEx system of our body and their surface markers represent a postal delivery code. On the other hand, exosomes are perfect surrogates of their parent cells and they can act on their behalf remotely across the body. How can exosomes be used outside from the basic research setup? Exosomes are in the blood, they are in milk, they're basically in all fluids of multicellular organisms, and they are not a one-trick pony. Their potential use is therefore manifold, and we are still scratching the surface of the extent of their role in life science. And now that we are beginning to understand their capabilities and uh, their mode of action, we can try to utilize that. And I can think of two main application areas, and that is firstly in therapeutic drug delivery and secondly in diagnostics. And could you give us an outlook of what could be possible in the field of applications of exosomes? So, first of all, there are emerging applications beyond healthcare. In the cosmetic field, in anti-aging, already today we can buy exosomes in lotions. Uh, There are companies that are offering the extraction of exosomes from cord blood or from young people only to re-transfuse them when they are old. At Lonza, we collaborate with Professor Danny Offen from Tel Aviv University, who has demonstrated the homing effect of bone marrow derived exosomes that migrate to lesions in the brain caused by neurodegenerative diseases such as Morbus Parkinson, Alzheimer, multiple sclerosis, autism. And his group could also show the exosome induced recovery of spinal cord injury in rats through axonal regeneration. And of course, this is contradicting a mantra that this is not possible. And it's, I admit, it sounds too good to be true, but if proven, it addresses one of the highest unmet needs in medicine. This actually gave me goosebumps. That's amazing. Yeah, and uh, since I don't have a, a crystal ball like none of us, I can only conclude that there is always a lot we can learn from science fiction where, and I think this goes back to Nelson Mandela, everything seems impossible until it is not. The expectations for exosomes progressing towards treatments are huge. For instance, they could compete with current cell therapy technology by replacing the need for a whole cell formulation. Yes, Martina, uh, absolutely. Exosomes can very well become the tool for next level cell therapy. First of all, the promises of exosomes are a direct result of their differentiating features. They are less complex and smaller than whole cells, 
and they can enter certain body compartments and can, uh, for instance, cross the blood-brain barrier. A straightforward application would therefore be in allogeneic cell therapy to use exosomes instead of their parent cells. So cell therapy 2.0, if you want, in indications such as wound healing, bone fracture repair, or cardiac repair after uh, heart attacks. And this is possible because the function there is largely depending on the activation of signaling pathways to induce the expression of growth factors. And this is a therapeutic effect that has been demonstrated by stem cells, mesenchymal stem cells, but are also known from their exosomes. These therapies would utilize exosomes' natural function. How about using them as a carrier of a therapeutic cargo? The loading of exosomes, as well as the decoration of their surface, those are areas that we are very actively looking into at Lonza. And there's yet another area that can be addressed, and that's the immunosuppression function of exosomes. You remember that last year's Nobel Prize in medicine has been awarded to the description of checkpoint inhibition, which tumor cells use to prevent attacks from the immune system. Today, we know that this suppression happens even far away from the tumor through exosomes that are being sent out like an army of drones, which fight T cells far away from the primary tumor. That's really interesting. We spoke about this a couple of episodes ago about the collateral damage of cancer treatments. I'm just thinking out loud here. Um, could you target the delivery of exosomes to a specific tissue? And if so, how specific is this? It's very interesting to see a similar opportunity to address this issue. Yeah, that very much depends on how specific uh, tumor-specific antigens are. And of course, we know from other areas, such as drug targeting with monoclonal antibodies, that there are very few antigens that are really specific for tumors. And of course, uh, tumor tissue is always heterogeneic. And it, there's no guarantee that uh, such surface markers, ligands, are not present on healthy body cells. And that's why every chemotherapy always has side effects. And it's uh, only a question of uh, what extent of side effects we can allow. But of course, uh, we are looking for antigens that are only present on tumor cells, ideally. Now, coming back to manufacturing, what are the current challenges in exosome manufacturing and how can they be addressed? Yeah, most challenges come from the fact that uh, the manufacturing standards in cell and gene therapy are still in its infancy like antibody manufacturing 20 years ago. The good news is that we are learning very fast from these standards from antibody manufacturing, for instance, and that we have already adopted platforms from MAP manufacturing, such as single-use bioreactors. And in purification of exosomes, we learn a lot from virus production, which is very well established in vaccine manufacturing since decades. Exosomes are abundant in the media during cell culture, which makes it very easy to extract. These products are also very stable thanks to the possibility of freeze-drying them, and this also improves their shelf life and simplifies the entire supply chain. However, some challenges still remain, especially in the area of quality. A current challenge is the characterization of exosomes to assure manufacturing according to predefined quality standards. And it is key to uh, define the critical quality attributes, and those are being defined as we speak, and the analytical machineries are also uh, currently being set up for exosome characterization. Exosomes can be used for diagnostics. Could you explain how would this work? Could they, for instance, replace the need for biopsies? Well, liquid biopsy is one of the big promises and uh, it's a mega trend in healthcare. To detect, for instance, a malignancy from the blood is minimally invasive, it's more precise, it's cheaper, it's ideal for screening, for profiling, for disease monitoring, especially in cancer. And to apply this is, of course, a no-brainer. And now imagine that tumor-derived exosomes are the perfect representative of their cell of origin and they circulate in the bloodstream. 
Are you saying that instead of targeting cancer cells themselves, we could just focus on exosomes produced by cancer cells no matter how many cancer cells are present in the body? The isolation of tumor-specific exosomes is a perfect solution. And now it becomes even better because exosomes are known to carry messenger RNA as a cargo. And messenger RNA is a precious cancer biomarker. So tumor-derived exosomes can be isolated from a blood sample to analyze tumor-derived RNA for relevant mutations, for mRNA signatures, uh, for for use in early diagnosis and uh, targeted treatment. Wow, this could have huge implications to transform routine testing. Absolutely. Of course, it can be used also for early detection and much, much earlier than any other possibility. And think of um, the old-style biopsy, which is, of course, still performed today, tissue biopsy. You have to be very lucky in order to be able to detect a cancer um, in very early stage, while the exosomes are already detectable in the blood. And I had a discussion earlier today with someone who told me, yes, it sounds very uh, promising, but aren't we miles away and maybe 10 years until this materializes? And my response was, no, we are in the middle of this revolution. It is currently going on and uh, liquid biopsy and again, exosomes are an enabler there, is at our doorstep. Thank you very much for your time, Uwe, and for sharing your insights with us. Yeah, you again, you are very welcome, Martina, and uh, have a nice day. Join us next time as we explore the challenges of cell and gene therapy manufacturing.